Hey everyone, Rayo here and welcome back to Reckless Ranger. If you're new to the series, Reckless Ranger is all about getting best in slot range gear, becoming as best as we possibly can with the range combat style, and grinding out new PRs on all available bosses. If you'd like to catch up with all the previous episodes, you can check out the playlist link in the video description, where you can also find my melee version of this playlist. Lastly, if you enjoy seeing this progress being done live, or if you would like to get notifications of any Twitch streams or new YouTube videos, make sure to check out the links from my Discord channel and my Twitch channel in the video description as well. But without further ado, let's get into the video. So today's episode is going to be pretty unique and something that I honestly didn't plan to cover originally, but it just came up on stream the other day and I just really wanted to cover it because it's such a strong build and it's such a fun build to do with ranged, especially with a longbow. And that is going to be hard mode care pack using big arrows. So this method was told to me by bomb tank and Alvin. Thank you guys for all the advice and telling me how to do this. It has been very fruitful for me and it's kind of rekindled my enjoyment of doing solo care pack. Like it's kind of all I want to do right now. So we're going to be going over to that and I'm going to be showing how to do it, how to build it and how to just get the most out of it from my current understanding. But before we do that, if you saw my previous PR video of doing hard mode care pack with range, You'll notice that I have a few upgrades like full serenic, greater death swiftness, and a few other things. So I'd like to catch us up, but if you would prefer to just skip ahead over that stuff, then you can check out the timestamps in the video description. So to just quickly go over my upgrades and how I got the funds. First off, I was doing a Zuck Reaper the other day and I got a Magma Tempest. Was not expecting that, but I took the Reaper for the sake of potentially getting a drop and it worked out. So <laughs> I put all those all those GPs that I got from the Magma Tempest towards a few upgrades, more so quality of life upgrades. I don't think that they were the ideal ones to get, but it was ideal for me because I typically prefer quality of life. With that being said, quality of life upgrades would pretty much be the greater death swiftness. I was on the fence about this one, but when I swapped to a longbow, I noticed how unswitch heavy it was. Greater Death Swiftness, just unlocking that and getting rid of the swap for Planted Feet is just a nice quality of life. It's not really a major swap because you only do it every so often. I don't even have to think about that. So I can take away a keybind. I can readjust my keybinds for less things, which is awesome. So I have less to worry about. The other upgrade that I made was full Serenic. That was because ED4 has made Serenic scales just ridiculous. I've gotten so much just from doing my 25 runs and some Zami. So I made my own set and I still have 137 left over. And I've already gone through about 15% since I made this set, which is kind of nuts. But I'll probably just be using this to recharge my current set because this has all the perks in it and I want to level this up as high as possible if I can before I upgrade to Elite Serenic. With that being said, I broke down my Pernix gear because I want to upgrade to Elite Serenic eventually and I'm going to need the Prey Solic Essence for that. That's not a main priority right now, so I have some Ancient Scales from ED1, but I may sell these to help me afford my next upgrade, which I'm planning to be the ECB EOF. Specifically the EOF so I can use it with the Longbow. I don't think I would want to camp the ECB because the God Arrows are just so strong and the ECB EOF could just really increase my damage output so that's kind of the plan going on for right now but now that we're all caught up on everything that we've obtained let's jump into this care pack build so the overall point of this build is to proc as much poison damage as possible there are a few things that are required a, a good handful of things that are required that will make this build into what it is and make it produce the output that it does there are a lot of things that have some cool synergies here as well that will increase your poison damage as well as increase your poison proc chances. So the things that are going to be hard requirements for this will be weapon poison, plus 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 would be the best, but whatever weapon poison you have access to would be great. The next thing is Cinderbane Gauntlets. These gauntlets will produce a chance to apply poison with every single hit that you do on the target. So for multi-hit abilities like Gricko, all of those hits have a chance to proc poison. The next thing that you would want to have is the Vamp Prism Aura. The reason why you want to have the Vamp Prism Aura is for the familiar, the Blood Reaver, which is from Ancient Summoning. These two go hand in hand because whenever you have the Blood Reaver familiar out, any healing that you take will initiate a hit onto your target. It is very minimal damage. It could be anywhere from like 6 to 30 or something really low like that. But the point of it 
is that it's a hit, and so every hit has a chance for your Cinder Banes to proc more poison. The Vampirism Aura, by default, will heal for every bit of damage that you do. Another thing that you would want to make sure that you have is Soul Split. Soul Split is essentially like the Vampirism Aura, except I believe it heals a little bit more, but it is an overhead prayer, so you can have both of them simultaneously. So this makes it so every single one of your hits is three chances to proc poison. That is because of the base hit, the Vampirism Aura hit from the Blood Reaver Familiar, and your Soul Split hit from the Blood Reaver Familiar. The next and probably the most important thing here are Bic Arrows. Bic Arrows will apply a stack of Evolving Toxin on your target, which will cap out at 400 stacks total. Each stack of Evolving Toxin will increase the poison damage intake by 2%. This takes a pretty decent amount of time to max out at 400 stacks, but when you are at 400 stacks of Evolving Toxin, your targets are taking 800% increased poison damage. This makes for some really nice poison hits. And of course, you will need a bow for this because these are arrows. Specifically for Care Pack, you will want to make sure that you bring Wen arrows as a swap because the clones in P4 have very high defense. I mentioned the effect of the Wen arrows in my previous episode, but essentially, whenever you use a few basics, they will increase the damage and accuracy of your thresholds and your ultimates, which is great for the echoes. Moving into some of the secondary requirements, some of these are very, very important. But I, I don't want to say they're a hard requirement, but they are a massive improvement into the effectiveness of this build. Primarily talking about Gricko. Gricko with Chroming 4 will make it so that all of your Ricochet hits will go onto a single target if there's only one target that is around. This makes it so you get a massive amount of proc chances on your single target, which would be Carapac or whatever boss that you're doing. Gricko also has a 10 second cooldown, so you can use this very, very frequently. You'll also want to make sure that you have either Greater Death Swiftness or Planted Feet Switch. This isn't a hard requirement, but the extended duration of Death Swiftness will always be a good thing because it increases the base damage of your abilities. The benefit of Greater Death Swiftness is you benefit from the extended duration as well as the damage over time effect when you use Greater Death Swiftness. I'm not 100% sure if the extra hits from Death Swiftness will apply Poison Stacks or have a chance to apply Poison Stacks, so if you have the answer to that, please let me know in the comments down below. Also, make sure that you have a decent pocket slot item. I personally use the Scripture of Full. It is a very expensive upgrade, but the upkeep cost is virtually nothing. If you don't have the Scripture of Full, Scripture of Jazz works just as well. Now let's get into the actual encounter and mechanics of the build itself. I'm going to mention how the build works and mention some things to keep in mind when you're fighting Care Pack, and then I'm going to end the video with a full kill uninterrupted from start to finish, that way you can see the rotations that I do. The first thing to mention is that you are going to be camping Soul Split for pretty much all of phases 1 through 3. Remember that the whole entire point of this build is to proc as much poison as we can and build the big arrow stacks as fast as possible for the involving poison stacks. And the Blood Reaver Familiar, as we mentioned earlier, will attack your target every time that you heal. Since you're camping the Vampirism Aura and you're using Soul Split, then you are getting two bonus hits from your Blood Reaver per hit that you do from your abilities. The only other exceptions that I found here are during the jumps for Care Pack. If you need a little extra time to get some more poison stacks built up, primarily in Phase 1, or if you're falling a little bit behind on Phases 2 and 3, you can swap to Melee Prey and just rely on your Enhanced Devoted as Care Pack will not move or progress the fight as long as you don't move him. I wouldn't recommend this too much because while Care Pack is idle, he is taking 50% reduced damage. The next thing to mention is that this isn't your standard rotation where you do Death Swiftness and do all your hard hitting abilities. Your primary focus, as mentioned earlier, is to stack poison and increase your chances of poison hits. So with that being said, you want to basically use your Gricko and Rapid Fire off cooldown and all your multi-hit abilities off cooldown. Rapid Fire and Gricko are your main ones, and it's important to keep in mind that your bleeds do not build multiple stacks. Your bleeds, just like any other regular basic, will only apply a stack for the first hit. When you are doing this method correctly, you ideally should hit lightning skips in phases 2 and 3 if you're using the exact setup that I am currently using. The last thing to mention here is that if you don't use an ability with big arrows equipped for 30 seconds, then you will lose all stacks. This is a pretty decent amount of time, and when you get to phase 3, you are going to be hitting 400 stacks of evolving poison at some point. 
So if you want to juice out a little bit more DPS, you can swap to wind arrows for your Gricko or your rapid fire to build up some icy chill and then use these on your thresholds. This will increase the damage by 2% per stack of icy chill, which is a pretty easy 20 to 30% bonus damage for your thresholds to help speed up phase three. The last main point is that you want to make sure that you are at 100% or near 100% adrenaline at the end of each phase because you want to start off your warp time with a death swiftness. It's always good to start off your rotation with the damage boosting ultimate. That way all of your basic hits will get 50% bonus damage on top of the chances that they're providing for proccing poison. This is especially important during phase 4. Some bonus tips here is to make sure that you use Vuln Bombs. The 10% damage bonus is pretty massive here, and if you have Smoke Cloud with Ingenuity of the Humans, that is also fairly beneficial, but definitely not required. When it comes to P4, the rotation here is a little bit more strict as opposed to phases 1 through 3. Phases 1 through 3, you're primarily focused on keeping your poison stacks up and you're building up to 400 stacks of poison, and it's fairly laid back compared to phase 4. In phase 4, you are going to be praying against magic and utilizing warp time so that you can get multiple devos as well as death swiftness. As phase four starts, zone into the northern clone, warp time, death swiftness, zone into your southern clone, vidpot, use Gricko, then zone into the western clone and use greater dazing shot. After this, just click back on the northern echo of care pack, limitless sigil, snapshot, and rapid fire. Rapid Fire will continue through your warp time ending, so don't worry about canceling that out. But by the end of this, you should have the Echo at about 40k health. At this point, use Gricko, Snapshot, and you should have enough adrenaline to start getting down the Western clone. The way that I personally handle this is I will work on both of the clones within the Death Swiftness that I spawned originally simultaneously, because when you kill the clones, Air Pack gets instantly enraged. So if I can kill them as close as possible to each other, then it'll help to reduce my damage intake by just a little bit. The best way to make use of damaging these clones is to build up the icy chill stacks with a few basics and then using a threshold. The damage increase on these thresholds is pretty big, so using a Gricko before a threshold increases the damage by 14%. So make sure you're using Gricko before your thresholds on these clones. After clones one and two, I personally like to use a shield swap, that way I can reflect on my way to the final point between Care Pack and the Southern Clone. This is not required, but just be careful of damage stacking. When you are closing the gap between the target that is launching a projectile to you, it will take longer to hit you. So if you are moving from a far distance to a closer distance, the far distance projectile, the medium distance projectile, and the close projectile pretty much all hit at the same time. And through prayer, care pack hits very, very hard, and it is easy to get one shot from full health. Reflect is very good to use because it's 50% damage reduction from all damage sources, whereas debilitate is just one damage source. You don't want to use barricade because that uses all of your adrenaline, and the ideal way to start this rotation is to start it the same way you did at the beginning. Warp time, death swiftness, build up adrenaline with Gricko, limitless sigil, snapshot, another basic, and Devo. You could also do Devo first and Rapid Fire. The main thing here is to get a basic, a threshold, a basic, and your Devo off. Devo is important during your warp time because it'll make it so you can use Devo instantly again after warp time ends. You don't want to use it right away, but it's good to have it off cooldown, otherwise it'll be on cooldown for 60 seconds. After you kill the final clone, you can camp one arrows back on care pack, or you can swap back to your Bic arrows, that way you can increase the poison stacks from zero again. At this point, just burst down care pack, use a few defensives to survive, and you are in the clear. Now let's move into a VOD of the full kill, that way you can see the fight from start to finish, uninterrupted.
that's all I have for you today, guys. I really hope that you enjoyed this poison spam bow guide for care pack. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, drop a comment down below letting me know your thoughts. And once again, thank you so much to Bomb Tank and Calvin. This has been such a blast to use. I'm looking forward to grinding out a lot more care pack. So if you guys would like to see any more videos regarding builds like this for guides of other bosses, maybe seeing if this build works at other bosses, definitely let me know in the comments down below. Lastly, make sure to check out my Discord and Twitch links in the video description. I stream a lot of my progress over on Twitch for these series, so you can hang out while I do it. Anyways guys, I'm Rayo, and I'll see you next time. Take care.